Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to class. Today we are going to talk about the relationship between language and culture. Right? Uh, the, the, the relationship between language and culture is intertwined. They have a symbiotic relationship, interdependent relationship. The issue of the influence of language on culture or the influence of or impact of culture on language has been long debated and uh, you know it is a long tradition of debate uh, and counter arguments in favor and against of it. Sapir, Edward Sapir and Benjamin Lee Wolf's idea and then French Boas idea for that matter. It's, it, has a, it has got a long tradition, right? Gumpers, John Gumpers for that matter, right? All these people have contributed a lot in understanding the relationship between language and culture. The anthropologist like Tyler is very, very uh, vocal about you know, uh, this debate. Then uh, a series of anthropologists, a number of anthropologists uh, have been contributing to this debate. So today we'll talk about the relationship between language and culture. Now, language and culture are intertwined and they both influence each other. Culture influences language and language influences culture, encodes culture, right? When we say culture for that matter, or if you look at the growth and the birth, growth and development of human civilization, uh, you know, the day we started interacting, sharing, right, the culture was born. And the culture was born because we started interacting and sharing. So it's very difficult to establish which is superior, which came first, which is important, which is influential, because they grow hand in hand. Cult the, the growth in culture has led to changes in language, right? And excessive interaction, sharing, and socialization develop the culture. So, it's it's very difficult to take a single position. If we have to see language and culture in totality, and how they are intertwined, what kind of symbiotic relationship do they share, right? And when we say different culture, different language, different culture. The difference in language, in terms of vocabulary, sentences, utterances, structures, and words, usages, are not merely differences of linguistic items, but also they represent a different value system. They represent a different cultural norm. They represent a different belief system, customs, right, traditions, conventions, practices. So, we can say that language is socio-culturally rooted. It grows like an organism in the fertile land of socio, social and, you know, uh, social, socio-cultural land. It, it grows like an organism. Uh, so, values, fundamental assumptions, social behavior, attitude, 
communicative patterns of a group constitutes a distinct culture of that group. So we cannot outrightly, uh, you know, reject the idea that we we know as superior wolf hypothesis. Culture, you know, you know, they talk about language and culture. They talk about linguistic determinism and linguistic relativity. The language may not determine our cognitive abilities, but definitely language and culture do share a common ground. They are interdependent and the influence goes in both directions. So, language does influence culture and culture does influence language. So, that is the relationship between language and culture. Look at English for that matter. English is spoken in United States, English is spoken in UK, English is spoken in Canada, Australia, Caribbean islands, in India, huge majority, right. Now, language is the same, but do we have the same cultural orientation of the language all over? These cultures are different, but we all use the same language. So, difference in language, do we, do we have different in grammar, grammar rules of English? But there are certain cultural items, there are certain, certain cultural components which are specific to Indian variety of English. We call it Indian English, right? Because, because there is certain element of Indianness, certain elements of Indianness are attached. Right, certain elements of, uh, you know, American society attached to American English, the spelling systems for that matter, or choice of words for the similar object, bonnet versus, you know, dick, uh, bonnet versus uh, hood for that matter, you know, lift versus elevator for that matter. So, Objective realities remain the same, but choice of expressions change, right? Norms of use change, norms of socialization changes, right? Uh, the context of use changes. So, with the change of culture, we find change of language. With the change of language, we also record and register difference of culture. So, language and culture are intertwined, they have a symbiotic relationship, they are inseparable and uh, it gets accentuated and underlined when we talk about second or third language learning. We will come to that in a while. Moving on, Krober says, culture is started when speech was available. And from that beginning, the enrichment of either one led to the other to develop further. So, they are interdependent, right? Culture is the consequence of interaction and act of communication is their cultural manifestations or assertion. If you, if you look at Tyler, he says, culture is an, in a complex definition includes beliefs, arts, skills, moralities, laws, tradition and behaviors that an individual as a member of a society gets from his own society. Now, let us look at this act of acquisition of language. When we acquire a language, we acquire a language in a socio-cultural context in a linguistically rich environment as a human child. When we say acquisition of language, what actually are we referring to? Are we referring only to structures, vocabulary, uh, grammatical rules or 
does that acquisition process also include the manner and the context in which these are used? So what Chomsky says, linguistic competence and countered by Delhams as communicative competence. So we not only we, we not only acquire rules of grammar, we not only acquire vocabulary, spelling and pronunciation, but we also acquire the manner and the context in which they are used. So the functional properties of language are equally important and the formal properties of language are not alone important. So when we say I know the language, we do understand that we are talking about the formal properties of language, knowledge of formal properties of language at the same time, knowledge of functional aspects of the language, the use of it, the so structure and its use. And the use of language is strictly socio-culturally determined. I will simply quote a few statements from various scholars who have contributed to this idea, understanding. Uh, one is Edward Sapir and he says, every cultural pattern and every single act of social behavior involves communication in either an explicit or implicit sense. So if you go to Krober's idea, culture started when speech was available, right? So when we say culture, it is a composite collective idea. Language inherits our shared history. Language encodes our shared history, shared culture, shared belief system shared practices, shared norms. So when a child acquires a language, a child acquires a language in a social environment and child becomes member of that particular group by subscribing to the patterns of communication of that group, the conventions of that group, cultural practices of that group. So we become individual at the same time part of that collective you know, identity. If you look at Crystal, he says language is a systematic conventional use of sound, signs or right written symbols in a human society for communication and self-expression. So for all cultural performances and representations, we require language. Uh, Referring to Sassur, his writings, right? If words stood for pre existing concepts, they would all have exact equivalents in meaning from one language to the next, but it is not true. The concept of a sound image or symbol in different languages is different. I unquote. Right? So if you look at the sound image, so the signifier versus signified. The objective reality remains the same for all languages, but the expression changes, right? So if you look at the way language encodes culture, culture, what is cultural knowledge that we receive and we get, we learn through oral instructions and close observation in a particular group, a shared knowledge about the culture. So an, a, a human child is born, it's a biological fact. So the biological reality of birth of a child remains the same across cultures, across languages. But the way he or she becomes individual, it happens in a particular socio-cultural context. And these cultural norms are taught, given 
to the child through oral instructions in the presence of adults, practicing adults around. So, child inherits cultural knowledge through close observations and oral instructions, do's and don'ts. I mean, you recall your own childhood. The way you, you are today, the person you are today, you are the product of a consistent, a structured and, uh, you know, instruction, cultural instructions that you received all around, right? Uh, the about the traditions, the conventions, the values, the morality, what to speak, what not to speak, when to speak, who is supposed to speak, what should be the genre of speech, right? How to disagree, how to agree, how to greet, how to socialize, how to meet. All these skills we acquire, all the knowledge of such things we acquire within a culture, right? Uh, our own social behavior, our manner, the patterns of our socialization, our association to a cultural group, a social group, our subscriptions to group norms, ethnocentrism, all our expressions that we learn, uh, we understand them, we practice them only because we have shared understanding, shared meaning, we understand about social hierarchy, our role, our social roles that we play, the, the distribution of power, status, position, you know. So, all these things we learn and all these things together composite way create culture and all these things we learn in terms of learning linguistic instructions, understanding linguistic instructions through language. All these are inherited and transferred through language. All such knowledge you know, are transferred through knowledge, language. So, uh, we not only acquire language, but we also acquire the knowledge of culture and the uh, you know, ability to use linguistic expressions and structures in a particular socio-cultural context. So, that is how our learning is complete, that is how our acquisition of language is complete because language encodes culture. And when we say linguistic structures, we are also referring to the function of, of it. And the function of structures is purely cultural and social. So, this learning takes place in both ways. This becomes very uh, prominent when you look at bilinguals. With the choice of language, with the choice of code, the speech patterns changes. The communication pattern changes, right? people who are multilingual. We have same language like English, but different cultures and different representations in that language, assertions in that language. Right? So, an infant or newly born baby is exposed uh, to language in the rich environment, but the newly born baby is also exposed to a series of cultural elements all around and this, this uh, understanding, this acquisition of language along with the functional properties of language take place together, right? they are not separate. Uh, children are brought up within a social group and they learn the di dialect or variety and communication patterns of that group along with the rest of the subcultural and behavioral traits and attitudes that characterize that group, right? And that is why it is important to emphasize on learning cultural context specifically in a structured classroom teaching of second language. When you learn English, you not only learn English rules, grammar rules, vocabulary, pronunciation, spelling conventions, but you also learn about the English culture, about the English society through language, through literature. 
so language and culture are very closely intertwined and it is it becomes more visible when we look at the loss of language because when you lose the language what do you lose identity the steam the pride you lose the shared history the difference between animal other species in the animal kingdom and human being is that we have our history we have our collective history and how is it possible if we have a knowledge of our collective history it's possible because of language if we have a shared culture and we are inheriting and transmitting it transferring it to the next generation it happens because of language right uh, so when you lose the language you lose everything you lose your own identity who you are right you you and the moment you lose identity then your esteem your pride i mean recall that 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 famous macaulay statement in his minutes of 1835 what he says we want to create a class of indians who are uh indian in bone and flesh but english in taste and morality that's the power of language he is referring to right and look at the linguistic conflicts all around the political conflicts all around so these conflicts have some genesis in the uh you know some 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 linguistic reasons for example creation of bangladesh a, a linguistic conflict a linguistic conflict that started between bangla and urdu led to division of pakistan right so it all started with a linguistic conflict and that flared up to political conflict look at uh, uh you know english only campaign in united states where a group of people demand that in order to have assimilation in the society we need to have english only uh you know in the society one language the however united states has not declared any language as as uh, official language so when you lose a language you lose identity steam pride your own shared history the shared knowledge that language encodes right uh, we lose the common binding factor of the group and the members and we lose cultural knowledge because they are all encoded in language a loss of language becomes almost like loss of culture so finally we do understand that language and culture are closely connected intertwined both influence each other they have a symbiotic relationship language encodes culture and language use is governed by socio cultural norms right and culture is expressed and asserted in terms of linguistic expressions that's the relationship between language and culture we will talk about sapir whorf hypothesis or linguistic relativity as it is known popularly in our next class and we'll see that even if we don't buy the strong version of sapir whorf hypothesis language and uh, uh, language as a determinant of our cognitive capabilities strong version we do understand that we cannot outrightly reject that as well so there is a degree of influence and that direction is bidirectional it is bidirectional both influence each other and going by crober's idea culture happened because language was available speech was available so with this this is it for now thank you
the cultural practices cultural beliefs social norms have a deep influence on linguistic structures look at the idea of politeness for that matter politeness is a cultural thing culture specific thing look at the patterns of socialization in different cultures look at the patterns of association in different cultures and when we try to translate those concepts in a different language translations offers us a deep insight into variation in culture and you know limitations of language in in accommodating those variations because these differences are not linguistic only they are cultural differences and cultural items are very difficult to translate from one language to other that is the relationship between language and culture right and uh, you know the moment we start using another language like a bilingual our entire communication pattern our entire socialization pattern changes right we do not endorse the strong version of uh, sapir vor hypothesis that says that our world views are constrained by the language we speak or language determines our cognitive abilities but at the same time we cannot deny that language you know is influenced by culture look at the cultural items for example the food items the rituals the expressions for rituals expressions for food expressions for traditions customs mode of address right socialization uh, intra group socialization inter group socialization patterns these are all expressed in terms of linguistic structures so that is the relationship symbiotic relationship between language and culture and these def- differences are seen when we, when we look at the multilingual or bilingual societies they are very clearly right so when we say loss of language we talk about loss of a shared history we understand loss of a shared culture those particular characteristics and distinct characteristics that characterizes that characterize a particular group if you look at the metaphors in the language right look at look at how language represents class how language represents you know group how language represents gender so you can find the connection between the two very very clear right for example sexism in language right uh, that denotes the social attitude towards a particular gender the collective attitude towards a particular gender how it is in a subtle way expressed in linguistic structures right uh, look at the request look at the demands and look at these structures available they follow the cultural norm right so linguistic structures and social structures are intertwined that is the relationship between language and culture language and society social stratification of of language was was emphasized by william lebov in his studies how class influences the choice of you know uh, expressions choice of words sentences stress right his math have been an island as well so a study as well as, uh, was equally prominent here if you look at a uh, various studies carried out in social linguistics they all underlined one fact that language is a social reality right it is deeply rooted in uh, you know socio political context it it cannot be studied or it cannot be understood and learned 
as an object right so so the influence between language uh, language and culture is bidirectional language influences culture culture influences language so we will we'll talk about uh, the relativity cultural relativity linguistic relativity in our next class when we talk about sapir vor hypothesis this is it for now thank you very much